Remember the video where I shared my top five handbag deal breakers? The reason why I was able to come up with that list is because of all these bags that I'm about to share with you that I either sold or did not keep. Hi, my name is Amy and on this channel, we're all about making stylish and savvy decisions around luxury fashion. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. One of the main reasons why things do not work out for us is lifestyle. So either the style itself is not suitable for you or the design or the color. You guys know that I am a lover of costume jewelry and I buy a lot of Chanel earrings. I'm sure if you know my collection, uh, you will know that I am a big, big fan of Chanel earrings. However, not all Chanel earrings are made equal. Some of them do have a different type of post. They have the regular thin post and they also have the tapered post. And I noticed that the ones that have the tapered pose are usually made in Italy. The tapered pose are too thick for my ears and they really irritate my ears. So, so far I've noticed that all the ones that I've sold are made in Italy. So now when I shop Chanel earrings, I, I always make sure to check the post before paying for it. Because the last thing I want is to bring home a pair of earrings that I cannot return anymore and it has the wrong kind of post. The Gucci Marmont belt, that distressed brown leather as well as the age gold hardware was too casual. It was almost too cowboyish. I think it has something to do with the GG in front being plain because it was in that age gold hardware as well as the leather texture being a very thick raw tan color. It almost has a patina to it and it really did not go with anything that I want to wear anytime I needed a belt. I guess I don't really need a belt to pull up my pants. I really just wear a belt as a decoration. You really have to choose things that are suitable for not only your lifestyle, but also the way you dress, the style you tend to like, the color palettes that you tend to like. I still do have one actually. I have this black one with pearl details. Two more accessories and they're both from Louis Vuitton. One is the AP Leather Toiletry 26 in the fuchsia color, as well as the Agenda in the PM size. And I've actually had two versions. I've had the AP version and I've had the canvas version. I do write sticky notes as reminders sometimes, but in general, I'm just a person who's always on my phone. I'd rather organize everything on my Google calendar. I just am a phone person. And papers, while they serve a purpose, and while they're great, I just don't go back to it. I, I might write it down, but I don't go back to it to look at it. It's kind of strange. So I realized that about myself that I don't even need agendas in general and let alone such a small one because that one, the size is so tiny. With the toiletry in AP leather in that beautiful fuchsia color, I bought it because I wanted to use it as a clutch. But right after I brought it home, I realized that the size was so big and that if I start loading it up, it becomes a little heavy for my wrists as well as kind of awkward in terms of size. I'm all about items being versatile and having more than one use, but truthfully, I do find that toiletries or cosmetic cases just don't have that same vibe. My biggest regret is to sell my Chanel 17B iridescent gold Chanel mini flap, or sometimes it's referred as rose gold. The past is the past, we can't change anything about that. But I guess the lesson learned for me is that while I still believe that the color was not suitable for me. I still do regret selling it because of the fact that Chanel minis are very hard to come by nowadays and that it was such a gorgeous color, like such a unicorn color that it should not have mattered whether I wear a lot of light colors or not. I should have just kept it as a collector's piece. Louis Vuitton Petit Noé is a gorgeous, gorgeous monogram bag. I was happy to have sold it to a lovely subby who still keeps in touch with me. Hello babe if you're watching. And she's taking such good care of it. Now, I sold it because I thought that it was redundant with what I already owned. At the time I had a Neverfull in monogram as well and I had the Bitsinoe and every time I reached for a larger bag I just went with the Neverfull. So the bucket bag just became kind of lonely. If I were to rebuy another monogram bucket bag I would probably go for a much smaller size because I'm just a very small size or mini size bag person. And the Bitsinoe even though it has the word Bitsi in it 
it's still not small enough for me. The Chanel Deauville tote, I had it in the medium size. After owning it, I realized that it was too big of a bag for me, even though I did not want to believe it because I loved the bag so much. It was such a cool bag. I felt so cool whenever I did carry it, which is a handful of time. I just am not a big bag person because not only does it overwhelm my body frame, but I just physically cannot carry very heavy bags, which is also why going forward, even though there's all these larger bags coming out nowadays which is the trend we have the on the go gms we have the large book tote from dior they're all so beautiful and i love them i just know that they're not suitable for me for my lifestyle and just you know for what i'm capable of carrying on the daily so even though i love them i'm just gonna admire them from afar because the deauville was a big lesson learned the fendi can i bag in the medium size and there was a few things going on with that bag the color combo was too warm like the tone was too warm for my for my liking it just did not go with my cool tone skin tone and just things that i wear in general so that was one the second thing is that i realized afterwards that chains really do bug me anything that is resembling the boy bag chains i just can't with the chains and the fact that the color tone was not the correct one like all these factors just led me to not reaching for it and therefore i did sell it recently let's move on to the next six items due to the reasons of either uncomfortable chains uncomfortable straps or really hard to get in and out handbags. The very first luxury handbag that I ever sold, you guys probably don't even know it because it was back in 2010. I actually walked into the Chanel boutique without any knowledge at all and without even knowing what I really wanted and I bought a Chanel bag. And it was the 2.55 reissue in their seasonal caviar leather. The bag itself was not comfortable for me. The fact that it was in caviar leather and double flap and it was the medium size meant that it was actually really heavy so the chain really dug in and also I really disliked the double flap. I felt that especially at the time, imagine back 10 years ago when you still use larger wallets and everything that you own like even the cell phones back then were bulkier and thicker Everything just was very hard to downsize to even the medium flap. Nowadays, it's not a problem, but back then, I did not know how to downsize as well. In fact, I never downsized before. So that handbag, unfortunately, I did own it for a few months before I sold it. And so it was a big lesson learned. Not only did I lost money with that handbag, but I also sold it almost like literally brand new. The Chanel Gabrielle backpack. I know you guys did not know that I had that bag. I was lusting for it. I was obsessed about it. So when my essay told me that it came in, I went and bought it only to realize when I brought it home that it was so hard to get in and out of that handbag. It's a backpack style, so you're supposed to wear it as a backpack, right? Which is already number one, very cumbersome to always have to bring it to the front. It was very hard to open it and still have it on your shoulder on one side. But if you didn't have it on your shoulder, you would have to rest it on a table or some sort of surface before you reached in because those chains just kept pulling from all the directions. And the fact that it was a solid base, it would have been really easy to drop it on the ground and it was just so cumbersome and so fussy. I just don't like the backpack style in the Gabrielle. I love the Hobo, but I just cannot stand the Gabrielle. So I actually sold it the next day, believe it or not. Now the Chanel boy bag is actually my first luxury handbag uh, from Chanel that I bought after my reissue in 2010. So I kind of took a long break before I got the Chanel Boy. At the time, I was hoping that the Chanel Boy would be my it Chanel bag. I thought that the style being more sort of grungy, more boyish, that it would be better for every day. But of course, I realized that I'm just not a Chanel Boy person because not only did it bulge out when I wore it crossbody, I did not like the fact that when you doubled it up, it was too thick to rest your arm on. And so it was really not a style that was suitable for me. Not to mention the chain that drove me nuts. Every time it would rotate itself or the, the leather portion would go through those loops. The Chloe Drew bag. I know that it's a fashionista handbag. The fact that it was only a crossbody or shoulder bag, it really just didn't help either way. It would have dug in anyway. 
and I find that that little lock mechanism was very cumbersome to get in and out so I did not keep it. The Speedy B 25 Damier Eben canvas. The fact that the Damier Eben leather really dug in, I mean that was the basically the main reason. I did repurchase it in the monogram but even with the monogram even though I do find that the monogram Vachetta leather is a lot lot more comfortable on the shoulder I also realize now that I do own the monogram that it's not really a style that I reach for anymore however I still think that the Speedy and the Neverfull both of them are great classics to own from Louis Vuitton because for me when I buy Louis Vuitton I just want to buy their canvas bags they're known for it they're beautiful the canvas is really classic looking I mean it's monogram but it's it's a monogram made in a really classic good looking way so I really don't mind that it's very logo plastered so I still recommend it if it's your if it's your jam but for me personally the size 25 even though it is the smallest of sweeties and the fact that it's it still fits a lot but it's not like a large tote size it's kind of in between it's really awkward for me personally i would rather either wear a tote because i'm either doing a lot of errands or i'd rather wear a super mini bag or just a mini bag now the zippy compact wallet when i want to get in my wallet i want to get in my wallet right away i don't want to wait i don't want to have to zip around and plus with my joint issues it was just not a suitable style for me let's talk about the very sensitive material that you have to baby burberry checker tote you would think that coated canvas would be durable and hard wearing but not for Burberry, especially because it was a lighter color canvas and for some reason the coating from Burberry just gets color transfer so so easily I could not believe how much of the denim transfer got onto my bag it was so terrible, I was terrified after that first time of getting it on and luckily I was able to wash it off but I just was afraid to wear the bag anymore and so I just sold it of course at a loss because um, also at the time, I did not know that Burberry bags did not retain their value and not that that's super important but it is important if you are trying to sell something all from Chanel and it is the caviar O case in the small size two small card holder or zip coin I don't know what you call them really but one of them is a flap style and one of them is a zip around and all of those SLGs I no longer have I only really use two luxury SLGs and they're both from LV one is a slim card holder and the other one is my six key holder even though there was nothing wrong with the Chanel SLGs they were all caviar very hard wearing they're still not as hard wearing as LV canvas and especially when it comes to small leather goods where I want to get in and out a lot and interact a lot with and I throw in my bag without having to worry about and baby it just it just drove me nuts that I had to baby it basically. There are two handbags that I sold because they were really heavy styles. I guess you could also add the Deauville in it and all those other ones that I mentioned earlier. It's two LV bags that had nothing wrong with them but they just did not end up working for me because I realized no matter how light the bag is when you first buy it, the moment that you load it up, especially if it's a larger size bags, which they were at the time, and the styles at the time were more prevalent, like larger bags were more prevalent at the time. The Evora MM size was a bag that I owned a long time ago, even way before that I started my channel. And it's just a bag that I never reached for. It was a beautiful bag. It was a bag that I bought while shopping with my mom so it was kind of a sentimental purchase I did buy it because I wanted to like celebrate my birthday I think it was like my 30th birthday and it was also in Dami Eben so the leather also dug in at the time I did not realize that that was the issue with the leather also I just thought that it was heavy same thing with the Kensington it's a beautiful beautiful handheld style tote that had a detachable shoulder strap but it was just not my style of handbag it became too heavy and if I did not put as many things in it, then it just defeats the whole purpose of all the space. Next, I'm going to share with you a bunch of items that I no longer have, but there's not really anything inherently wrong with them. The trendy CC clutch with chain from Chanel. The reason why I sold it is not because there's anything wrong with the item. I seriously still love it. It's tiny, it's dinky, it doesn't fit a phone. You should all know that already. But the reason why I sold it is because shortly after that, my personal shopper was able to find me the Chanel bucket bag. I had to make a choice of either keeping both items or be more sensible and just really keep the one that I know that I will reach for more. And so I went with the bucket bag and I sold the 
novelty little trendy CC. I don't regret it at all by the way. It's a beautiful bag. I do miss it. But my lovely friend Gina, hi, she has the bag now and she's loving it so much. And I don't regret it also because I already have a novelty bag. This is the round clutch with chain. So they're very, very similar. They pretty much fit exactly the same amount. And they're both dinky novelty items. So since I already had this, I didn't feel so bad. And plus I really, really wanted the bucket bag. The Alma BB and Alma PM. The Alma PM was my first LV bag. So it was kind of a sentimental purchase, but I was not reaching for it. The size was too big. It was a very elegant style. So it's not so much the style, but the size itself was not suitable for me. So it went to a good home again to one of my lovely subby. The Alma BB on the other hand was a perfect size, but at the time I also made a sensible decision to let it go because I had just purchased my square mini from Chanel and I found myself reaching for the square mini more. I still really love the bag by the way, so maybe I will add it back sometime in the future. It's not a priority by any means. The very coveted Palm Springs mini backpack and the Pochette Mitsis. Blazing issue with the Pochette Mitsis and with the Palm Springs mini, I started having crack along the lip of the zipper. Both of these bags were amazing. They were perfect for me in terms of like size, lifestyle, just I love, love, love carrying them, but I no longer have them because LV took it back. I don't know if I'll add them back, to be honest. The way I usually work is that if I don't have those items anymore, then I just kind of move on and, you know, enjoy what I have now. So I don't necessarily think that I will add them back, but they did serve their purpose while I had them. And unfortunately, they just were defective. I also had a Mila clutch. It's one of those very small little pouches. To be honest, now it would be perfect because now I don't mind it. But at the time, I just thought that it was too small, too thin, and phones were only going to get bigger. So I just decided to let it go at the time. I don't regret it, but if I still had the item now, I think that it would still be really useful because things are getting smaller and mini tiny nano bags are in style. So it would have still been a nice item to have. The monogram shawl in black. Nothing wrong with it. I actually have the denim one still with me. I just had two LV shawls that I don't really rotate enough. I bought the denim one first. I wore the denim one a lot and then I bought the black one but never really reached for it because I just kept reaching for my denim one and so I just let go of the black one. The Gucci Marmont bags. Now I had two of them, believe it or not. I had the small one in velvet, which I'm sure a lot of you knew, but I also had the medium size really, really briefly in black leather. Both of these bags, nothing wrong with them inherently. Style-wise, I know they're less trendy now, but they were so wonderful and really easy to get in and out bags. And especially if you're not into Chanel flaps or if the price of the Chanel flap was not for you and you really did not care about trend and like, you know, uh, resale value and all that, I think they're wonderful, wonderful options. But for me, they were just too similar to my Chanel flaps. I always just reach for my Chanel minis instead of the small size Marmont. When I had the medium size Marmont very briefly, I just realized that it's so similar to my jumbo size classic flap, which I don't even reach for that much. So why keep it? One of my lovely subby wanted to purchase it from me since I bought it at a really good price. And so she had a Gucci zip around little coin or card holder. Nothing wrong with that one. I actually used that for a while and really loved it. But after a while, I just realized that I just needed a card holder, like a really flat one. I don't even need a whole zip around one. Just eventually when your lifestyle changes and you are downsizing even further, I just realized that I don't really need it anymore. So I also let that go. And finally, the last item is the Dior Vintage Clutch that I bought a while ago on eBay. And I even had a whole video made on that. Having owned that item for a while and being a vintage item, I realized that I just like new. I'm the type of person who loves to take care of my items. I love to be the one putting the wear and tear in my items. Passing the question off to you, which are some of the items that you absolutely, absolutely love but had to let it go because of one reason or another? Let me know down below. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. I would love to have you back and I'll talk to you guys again very soon. Bye!